Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwentedge. In this show, we take a look at some specific decks and really fun decks to play around with and uh, sometimes really specific cards as well. But today, we're gonna actually take a look at the this month's seasonal mode. So Seesaw. Seesaw is a special mode where on the end of each player's turn, their old power units are uh, damaged by one and their even power units are boosted by one. So this gives you some really fun dynamics. And I wanted to show you a variation of last weekend's deck, the uh, Fickle Nature deck, that is specifically focused to deal with this seasonal mode. So it is Quietel, it is nature's gift, but with a few adjustments. Uh, I'm gonna dive into the deck first so we can check that out. So Seesaw Nature, you'll see a lot of familiar stuff from uh, last episode in this uh, specific deck, but there's a few variations here. So it's still non-devotion. We still have Karate Heatwave. We still have Etne. We still have the Forest Protector, but we also have Geralt Erden, uh, specifically to deal with like giving ourselves a last big boost of damage, basically. So resetting an entire row, uh, especially in this mode where our opponent will be focusing on boosting a lot of units. Uh, that's gonna be very, very handy, especially against Northern Realms. Uh, I'm just going through the list of differences. I think the biggest differences are in the bronze cards. So Mahakam Defenders, because of Seesaw, will automatically boost themselves um, twice per turn. So if you just play a Mahakam Defender, as long as it's even, it will first get boosted because of uh, Seesaw itself, and then boosted again because of his own ability. Um, Hamad Riots are still very useful, often getting boosted another uh, by another point because of Seesaw, as long as it's uh, even when the turn ends. And then uh, the last few additions are the four point bronzes down here. So Dryad Enchantress gives us Vitality and Dryad Grove Keeper does basically the same thing, but it can be a bit longer depending on the um, amount of Dryads we have on the field. But the reason why we're going with this deck is because Vitality specifically is extremely powerful in this deck. Basically, the base idea of Seesaw is that by the end of your turn, you need to have as many units as possible at an even power level. If you do that and that unit has Vitality, you get boosted twice on that specific unit every turn, which is... Of course, that gives you the benefit of going further and further. There's a few boosting cards here as well, um, specifically focusing on boosting by an uh, old number, which means that, for example, with Tempering, we boost by five. So if your unit already has an old number, it would have been damaged by the end of your turn. But if you boost it by Tempering, which also gives you an old number, for example, if you start at three, boost by five, you get up to eight, and that's an even number, and you get boosted on top of that because of Seesaw. Um, might sound a bit challenging right now, but it's uh, just basic mathematics and that will work out in the demonstration match that we're going to head into right now. But before we do that, uh, this deck composition is also available in the um, description of the video on Playgrant. I'll add the link there and you can check that out for yourself and import it to use in the remainder of the season because it's a really fun deck to use and you'll see that in just a second. So don't forget to select seasonal if you're going for a specific seasonal deck because otherwise if you go into standard that might be a bit more difficult. I think this deck is still going to be viable in standard but it's yeah it's more focused on seesaw itself so let's head in. So if you're playing seasonal what you'll usually see is oh that's actually interesting. I rarely see Nilfgaard on Seasonal. I was gonna say you usually see Monsters or Squirtel or Northern Realms, but not Nilfgaard. That is interesting. We'll probably get a lot of uh, locks. Um, but that's not too bad. We can deal with all of that. Um, as a start, I think I'm gonna actually remove the Dwenkanel Guardian. Uh, Circle of Life is not that useful now, and Gord we can fetch with, yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, so we get, that is a, wait, what? Is that a tree power in Slave? What? That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense, but let's just put a Mahakam Defender down as a start, so, and that will demonstrate what this mode actually does. So, the effects trigger in a weird order, so Seesaw triggers first. 
So if your unit is at a base power that is even, it will get boosted and then its abilities will trigger. So that's why the Mahakam Defender now boosts itself up to five. And then it checks, okay, it is boosted. Fine, let's boost it again, because that's its ability. And for some reason, they did that. Okay, that is fine, I suppose. Um, that's very weird. Um, it's not going to be boosted again, so I don't even need to take it out, really. So let's just go with the Hammer Riot and do our uh, strategy. So the Hammer Riot works the same way, but because it actually boosts itself twice, it's not going to be at a power level that is uh, even after this. So it's going to go up to seven because of Seesaw. So first Seesaw triggers and then the Vitality and the Hammer Riot ability triggers. So that boosts itself up to three. And that is actually pretty nice. So now he gets that up to eight. So smart. Smart. Um, can we actually take that out? I think we can. Might as well do that. So let's do Nature's Rebuke. Damaging the Mahakam Defender again. Um, and I'll leave it at that for now. I'm not going to overplay too much. So now, of course, the Hammer Dryad gets damaged first, but then boosts itself by two again, giving us one extra point uh, in total. Okay, so Impera Enforcers will boost up to five. Uh, we can use another Nature's Rebuke to offset that. So let's deploy our Forest Protector, use that Nature's Rebuke from the graveyard again and take out that Enforcer. That is not ideal, but we could, yeah, we could just put that on the Forest Protector. So now the Forest Protector is also even, so we have three even units. And that is a-okay. So only the left uh, tree and got damage there. Purify three adjacent enemy units and damage them by two. Damage by two is not as powerful as you might think. Because of course that gets mitigated again by Seesaw in the next turn. Um, I think as a first step I'm going to use Dryad's Caress on the Wandering Tree end. That's going to put it to even and vitality again. So that is going to be nice, uh, and that's about it. So now, of course, there's two units that gets damaged, and we go keep going. But because we have so many vitality options and boosting options, we have a lot of tools to keep our units at an even power. And that's what this game mode is all about. So for some reason, we get purified there. I'm guessing my opponent is actually working on the uh, purify... Well, challenge in the uh, the purify assignment in the uh, the journey, which is why we're not getting a hell of a lot of trouble here. Um, let's just use shaping nature just to get rid of it. Um, might as well just do the five on five because that's going to be very good on the hammer drive, even though it goes to an uneven an old number now. But I'm guessing we have this round in the bag anyway. There we go. Lots of boosty boosties. Especially on that tree end that has uh, vitality, which shows you the power of vitality. So as long as there's uh, vitality on that tree end and the tree end stays at an even power, it will just get boosted by two at the end of every one of your turns. And there we go, we get that pass. Uh, so let's just pass that as well. I'm guessing since the leader ability is already gone, we might as well just push and finish this off because I think I've proven my point. So next up we get uh, another Dryad's Caress, which is not that useful, I suppose. Although, might as well get rid of Tempering because the Vitality is a lot stronger. And then the Dryad Growth Keeper, we don't have a lot of Dryads, so we might as well just do that. Um, we have a Purify, so might as well just put the Hammer Dryad on there and give her Vitality. There uh, we go, with that lovely Francesca skin. Doing that windy animation. And that gives us a seven point Dryad in one go, which also means that even Assassination will not take that out. Um, we still have a Purify, so might as well just use Ida as another Vitality trigger. It's not going to be as powerful as it could be because of the uneven power, the old power, but uh, that's that. And then we got Masquerade Ball, which is, uh, yeah, I think that's just very funny. That is very funny. So let's just Karate Heatwave that Masquerade Ball so we don't get the double poison out of that. 
Um, and we can actually put our last vitality on Ida as well. There we go. That gives us another vitality. Sadly, that's something I really hate about the Thirsty Dame. Thirsty Dame also triggers on vitality, which is bullshit. But there we go. Um, I think I'm just going to go with... Hmm. I think I might just let this go. So Masquerade Ball is gone. Karate Heat Wave is gone. I'm just going to pass. Because that gives us um, a three point advantage. And then after the Hammer Drive does that again, we get another three points. So our opponent needs to do seven. Oh, that's not going to be. That's not going to win you the round because we go up. Nope. There we go. So they need to waste another card. They didn't take into account what Seesaw does. Because all the units were old powered, which means they got all damage. Now they're going to get boosted again, but that's only four points, so they definitely need to do something now. And you can see the confusion there, but yeah, the amount of purifies we've seen, it's definitely just a deck that's focused on purifying to get that uh, faction done. There we go. Um, so that's basically the rules. You want to get your old numbered units back to an even number and then maybe add vitality on top of that. If you can just add vitality on an even uh, powered unit that's very good as well so i don't think i need to do any more fancy demos here i think that's clear so if you have any more questions about seesaw i think this first demo match was enough to get get the point across um it's a really cool deck with the vitality because the vitality gives you the benefit on top of what northern realms tries to do so if you have northern realms decks for this as well but northern realms just tries to boost everything back to even but with this deck you can also add vitality which gives you another point uh, often even another two points on top of that and just keeps that going um so that's why i really like the nature version of this so that's seasonal, uh, that's my deck for the seasonal event. I know it's been a bit late in the season. I'll try to do this, this a bit more quickly next month so you can get going on that really, really quickly. Hope you guys enjoyed this little episode of Gwentech. Next up is gonna be another uh, proper deck guide with the uh, the Monster Frost deck. So keep an eye out for that, for that in the coming days. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode of Gwentech. Goodbye.